Greetings viewers, students, scholars and academicians to this ongoing lecture on European realism and on one of the founding fathers of French realism, Honoré de Balzac. My name is Piyush Chaudhary and I am teaching at the Department of English, Hansraj College, University of Delhi. In the previous two sessions, we discussed at length on the aesthetic category called European realism and also its emergence in the 19th century literary thought. The previous two lectures also aimed to discuss the rise of realism and the novel in Europe and the scope, features, development and the historical and political context of this term European realism. In the last two lectures, we also comprehensively discussed how this term realism can be applied to and in relation with Honoré de Balzac, the 19th century French novelist who with great conviction can be said to be one of the founding fathers of French realism. The previous lecture also briefly discussed some defining features of Balzacian fiction and his version and Balzac's own version of social realism with special reference to the novel Old Man Goriot, which was published in 1835 by Honoré de Balzac. And this lecture today is this lecture today is basically a continuation of the previous lectures where we discussed the various features of Balzacian fiction with special reference to this novel Old Man Goryeo published in 1835 and by using this novel as a vantage point we will navigate our way into the Balzacian world of realist fiction and then we will also try to understand Balzac's idea of social realism as he exemplifies it in this novel throughout. Now what I will be doing is that I will be reading excerpts from the novel, I will be showing you various excerpts from the novel and we will also try to understand the characterization, the key tropes, the various symbols that Balzac has used, the themes and even more importantly the historical contact, uh, this historical context and Balzac's literary achievement in Old Man Goryeo. So these will be the key ideas that will that I'll be trying to share in this particular lecture. So basically, to begin with, this novel Old Man Goryeo is basically it, it's set in the in the year 1819 during the Bourbon monarchy restoration during the Bourbon restoration after the fall of Napoleon. This novel was published in 1835, and the novel shows us. Basically, this novel is about greed, about the grudges, about the desires and the crimes which remain completely hidden beneath the social fabric of everyday life. Balzac attempts to unravel the greed, the grudges, the desires and the crimes and the reality which remains hidden beneath the social fabric, beneath the everyday life. And he is trying to unravel all these, all these aspects to the readers. So basically the novel has three central characters. The first is the eponymous character Goryeo himself. He is an old man and a rich pasta seller who started as a humble pasta seller as a grain trader and over the course of the French Revolution he made a big fortune by selling pasta, by selling wheat, by selling grains at exorbitant prices. And Goryeo is basically exceptionally Goryeo is exceptionally, madly, almost, I would say, fanatically fond of his two daughters who in turn love him only sparingly when they are in need of money and who ultimately drain him of all the wealth as the novel comes to its end. This man Goryeo is, is an old widower who is now living in the boarding house on meagre means and as the novel progresses, he becomes much more miser and he becomes increasingly parsimonious to somehow save money, not for himself, but for his daughters. And later on, only to find that his two daughters have deserted him on his deathbed towards the end of the novel. The, the, first, the, the first character is Goryeo. The second character is Eugene de Rastignac. Arguably, and we'll come to the fact why arguably, arguably the protagonist of the novel, and the young, handsome, debutant, middle-class man coming from provincial life of France 
who tries to find his way to upward social mobility. Rastenag is a countryside nobleman. He comes to Paris as a student of law to study law. But little does he have any idea that by the end of the novel, as the novel ends, he would learn the harsh laws of the world that permeates the high-class, fashionable Parisian culture and society. The third major character of the novel is Vautrin, also known as Collins, the devilish serial killer and convict who is hiding in plain sight amongst the inmates of the boarding house. He is a very sharp man and a very keen analyst of his surroundings as well as of the society. He looks to be a very easy-going man. He looks to be calm, composed. He is an easy-going man, but he can turn tables exceptionally fast. At once, he is a calm, composed, easy-going, a laid-back man. But then, right, on the, right at the other moment, he can become extremely violent. He is extremely sly. And as we find in the arrest scene of Watrin, he reacts with an almost savage-like burst of energy. And this is what exactly makes him one of the finest creations of Balzac because he is a keen analyst of the society at large. It is through Watrin and also through Madame de Buzion that Balzac shows us his social realism. We will come to that very shortly. So overall, in all, there are three plots intertwined in this novel, Old Man Goryeo. The first is of the old father Goryeo himself and his fanatic and obsessive love for his three daughters. The second plot is about the young, talented, provincial, middle-class Eugene de Rastignag who is trying to make his way into the high-class aristocracy. And the third is the monstrous Watrin and his efforts to seduce Rastignac to commit a ghastly crime so that he can himself earn some quick money as commission from Rastignac. So overall, there are these three plots which are intertwined in the novel. Then there are several other characters as well. The most prominent amongst them is Madame de Buzion, an aristocratic woman, and she is also a distant relative of Eugene. She is the one who mentors Eugene into the ways of the upper class Parisian world for the very first time. Then we have another character and the elder daughter of Goryeo, her name is Anastasi, Anastasi de Resto. She is the elder daughter of Goryeo. And also, then the other character is Delphine de Nusenzon. Nusenzon is the younger daughter of Goryeo. And we see how both these characters, both these sisters are, in a, are engaged in a petty social sibling rivalry. Also, we have the owner of the boarding house. Her, her name is Madame Vauquier. Madame Vauquet is a stingy widow who is the owner of the boarding house and initially when Goryeo comes to the boarding house, he rents a lavish room suiting his rich status and it is here that Madame Vauquier tries to seduce Goryeo and refers to him as Monsieur, a respectable title and as soon as Goryeo later on rents a cheaper room at the third floor of the boarding house, she starts referring to him simply as Old Goryeo. Then we have some other boarders as well in the boarding house. For example, we have Monsieur Piore. Then we have Mademoiselle Michonio. We also have Madame, uh, uh, Madame Cuto. Then Victorine Talifer. And then also the workers of the boarding house, Sylvie and Christophe. But what is perhaps more important than all these characters is to understand that, that through all these characters in the novel, be it the major characters or be it the minor characters, Balzac is trying to show us how important money actually is in the post-revolution 19th century French society. Balzac also attempts to show how the landed gentry, how the aristocracy, how the nobility, the landed gentry is facing a challenge from the industrial and middle class. And herein lies the immediate historical specificity and a very key feature of Balzacian fiction. 
Now, this novel, Old Man Goryeo, is not just about an aspiring young man who is, you know, trying to find his way in the society by hook or by crook, which obviously Eugene Derastiniag is trying to do. But this novel also gives us a glimpse of the social history of the times in which it was written. The social history, and I am stressing on it. So, and, and as the lecture progresses, I will be stressing upon it more. Now, what I will be doing is, to take as the text, I will be using the Penguin Classics edition of Old Man Goryeo, which was originally published in 1835. The readers can obviously go for any translation that they like. There are loads of translation available. But here the translation that I will be referring to, which is usually referred to in the syllabi of most Indian universities, is the Penguin Classics edition. Also, this has a very detailed introduction by Graham Robb, who was the official biographer of Balzac and a very prominent British literary critic. Now, as you can see in the slide, uh, this is the uh, Penguin Classics edition which I was talking about and all the references henceforth, as, as the lecture progresses, all the references will be given from this particular book, which is translated by Olivia McCannon. And it is the Penguin Classics edition. Now, the novel is basically divided into several sections with, with a total of six sections in the Penguin Classics edition. However, it is very important to note that these divisions are only there in the Penguin edition, which is translated by, as I mentioned, Olivia McCannon. And Balzac originally did not conceive of such divisions when he was writing his work. Now, these divisions only aid a better understanding of this rather hefty novel and it will be easy for the readers to make sense of. That is why I have used this edition and I will also be referring to these six sections, these six parts of this novel. Now, as you can see in the slide, uh, you must be seeing in the slide, the novel is basically divided into six parts. The first is a respectable boarding house. And in today's lecture, we'll be discussing, we'll be having more in-depth discussions on this particular part number one, a respectable boarding house. Then the next one is two calls are paid, an introduction to society, cat or nine lives, the two daughters and death of the father. So basically, these are the six different parts which are uh, there in this novel. And the novel is divided into these six parts which you just, just uh, saw. Now, let us begin with part number one that is a respectable boarding house. Now, again, as you can see in the slide, these are the first few lines of the novel and because the novel begins on these lines, these are important to refer to. And I am quoting here, For the last 40 years, an old woman by the name of Madame Walker has run a boarding house in Paris. Although this respectable establishment known as Maison Walker accepts both men and women, young and old, its habits have never once excited malicious gossip. But then, no young lady has been seen there for 30 years. And a young man who lodges there must have a very small allowance from his family. Page number 3, and I unquote here. Now, it is Balzac's, if, if you look at the quote again, it is Balz you will realize that it is basically Balzac's literary style that he reveals the personality of the characters and the immediate surroundings through what? Through detailed description of the material environment of any character. If you look at the quote again, you will realize that he is basically describing the material environment of any character. This quote that we read is basically a clear example of this aspect. Time and again, we realize that the significance of money, the significance of the material and the economic status of the characters is the central focus of Balzac all throughout the novel. And what does Balzac call? Balzac calls the boarding house as a respectable establishment, but represents it far from being a respectable boarding house. Though the novel is with its focus on an old man ill-treated by his own daughters might induce a sentimental angle to it, but the novel is in fact far from being a sentimental novel. In the previous lectures, we had already discussed this. So when you come to the end of the novel, 
there is some sense of sentimentality associated with the last few pages with the last 10 15 pages of the novel where goryeo is in extreme pain because he knows that his daughter ha- his both his daughters have deserted him so but still the novel is far from being a sentimental novel in the preceding lectures we have discussed that realism as an art form was in fact realism as an art form and realism as an aesthetic form it was in fact a revolt against the sentimental novel so the beginning pages of the novel coming back to the beginning pages it describes the boarding house or maison vauque it's also known as maison vauque it's the boarding house which is a modern equivalent of a hotel of a lodge so the beginning pages describe the boarding house as a dark decrepit a dingy place which is absolutely drab in essence and in this novel this boarding house is basically as i mentioned it's it's a modern equivalent of a hotel you can you can imagine it as a hotel where the major characters of the novel live and in short even balzac has had once said that the boarding house represents the microcosm of the larger french society and most of the action in the novel takes place inside the boarding house now let us try to briefly also discuss the significance of this boarding house so goryeo the eponymous character of the novel as we know by now is an extremely rich old man <clears throat> who after being deserted after being deserted by his own daughters is now living an impoverished life at the boarding house and to keep up with the rising demands of his daughter of both his daughters in fact and to give them money and help them financially the old man finally begins to live a miserly life he dies at the end of the novel as a penniless man deserted by her own daughters in a very tragic manner now it is the boarding house where eugene comes off as a young country boy coming to the city to study law it is in the boarding house itself that eugene learns some of the harshest lessons of life and realizes that to gain foothold in the society he needs to learn much more than academics than than academic books and law books now watrin the devilish convict whose real name as i mentioned was collins was also living in the boarding house he was an escaped convict and he tries to ensnare eugene into the plan of killing victorine's brother and then sharing the huge profit with him watrin is a powerhouse of energy and there is something very devilish very evil very satanic about his presence as the reader finds in the novel as the novel progresses particularly if you can if you if you look at the intense scenes where he is engaged in conversations with eugene rastinag and he is trying to seduce him into committing the ghastly crime watrin is an exceptionally sharp witted and a very sly man but ultimately he gets arrested in the boarding house as soon as his real identity gets leaked and the police comes and takes him off thus it would be safe to assume that this boarding house reflects the french parisian society the parisian society and allows the panoramic view of the 19th century france <clears throat> the boarding house also accommodates people from all walks of life from all classes from the rich pasta maker goryeo to the young provincial Eugene Rastignac to Watrin the escaped serial killer to Victorine Taliefer a rich heiress devoid of her fortune and who has been outcasted all characters from different walks of life find a place in this boarding house and the majority of the action happens inside the boarding house itself now the three major characters Rastignac Goryeo and Watrin they are closely knit by the boarding house So this boarding house is perhaps the only thing that remains constant in their lives. The boarding house is a dull, decrepit, dilapidated place and represents the decay in the Parisian life of 19th century France. Also, Eugene Rastignac, as soon as he gets a taste of the high class aristocratic culture, starts to dislike the boarding house. Initially he likes the boarding house but then later on he starts to dislike the boarding house once he gets the taste of the high class aristocratic culture. therefore the boarding house also reflects 
a character's social standings in the society. If you, if you see in the boarding house, there is also division amongst the boarders based on their lodgings. The first rooms are near the ground floor. And as the characters move upwards, as we move upwards, the rooms become more shabby. Thus, a division can be seen amongst the boarders and the inhabitants based on their economic status. It is interesting to note how Goryeo was favoured by the owner of the boarding house, Madame Wokue, but as soon as Goryeo shifts on the upper uh, rooms, on the floor upstairs, he loses his respect in the eyes of Madame Wokue, who was earlier referring to him as Monsieur Goryeo, but now she is just referring to him as Old Goryeo. She was earlier trying to seduce him to in fact even marry him. But later on, he loses his respect because he goes in the shabby floors, in the, in the lower floors upwards. So the boarding house is a place where outcasts reside. For example, Watrin, Goryeo, Rastinag, Victorine. It's, it's, it's a temporary abode for all those who have been outcasted or are travelling and new to the city. Watrin is a criminal on the run in disguise. Watrin is driven, Victorine is driven away from the inheritance of her father and her family. She, has, she needs to find a place to settle down. Rastinag has also come to Paris from his hometown to become a lawyer in Paris. Goryeo is again driven away from his daughters and now he is living a pathetic life being the butt of jokes of the people around him. So therefore, the idea is that the boarding house is shown as a, as a shady place where the residents are as shady as the surroundings and the place itself. Also, this once again reinforces the notion that Balzac believes in. And what is that? That an individual cannot be read or studied outside of his immediate surroundings and backdrop. And in the novel Old Man Goryeo, Balzac has intertwined these three underlying plots. Goryeo's relationship with his daughters, Rastinag's attempt to make a fortune, and then lastly, Watrin's evil actions to earn some quick money. But what remains constant in the novel? It's the boarding house. An old, decrepit place where everything is decaying and dilapidated. The place is shabby and Balzac therefore represents the French society as a whole and also very importantly underscores the disorganized social space of the post-revolution France and the selfishness and the morally corrupt behavior of a society which is driven by greed and deceit. The boarding house, therefore, is the microcosm of the French society. In fact, I would say it is a whole character in itself. Now, let us look ahead at the description of Balzac about Rastignac and his engagement with the society that he lives in. It is important from the standpoint of the novel and I am quoting it here. And I quote, Balzac writes, Eugene de Rastignac had returned to Paris in a frame of mind well known to all young men of superior ability or those spurred on by difficult circumstances to achieve greatness as law students are required to do very little work to pass their preliminary papers at the faculty, during his first year, Eugene had been free to sample the obvious material delights of Paris. As his initi initiation proceeds, he becomes more thick-skinned, broadens the scope of his expectations, and finally works out how the human strata of society overlay each other. His childhood illusions, his provincial mentality had disappeared. On his return to the paternal man man manor house and the bosom of his family, his sharpened, intelligence and heightened ambition made him see both in a clearer light. And I unquote here. Now here Balzac does two very important things. On the one hand, he goes on to show, he goes on to describe the academic discipline of the study of law in those times and doing so, and in doing so, he thereby adheres to the realist school of writing. And on the other hand, Balzac also makes it clear to the reader that in the 19th century French society, hard work will not guarantee success in life, thereby also showing us his version of social realism and an extremely keen understanding of a novelist who is also a sociologist and as a novelist, as a sociologist, Balzac is keenly studying and analysing society. This is Balzac's unique strength in Old Man Goryeo and in fact all of his fiction. So he is adhering to the realist school of writing, painstakingly noting down and copiously noting down the actual realist events. But on the other hand, he also shows the forces that drive society. He also shows 
his version of social realism like, like a keen sociologist. To gain success in life, even talented men, Dalzac is attempting to show us that to gain success in life, even talented men like Eugene will have to resort to immoral means. And Balzac shows that the law of the world is survival of the fittest. Eugene realizes that after coming back to Paris, that to gain access to high class Parisian society, he needs the patronage of his distant cousin. And his distant cousin and aristocrat, Madame de Buzion. Though Eugene is inexperienced, he is nevertheless, and it is interesting to see, he is nevertheless a very quick learner. And as Balzac mentioned in the quote which I just mentioned, he is disillusioned after his first brief encounter with Madame de Restaud. Again, you will notice that Eugene has high hopes for making it big in the highly competitive and in the merciless Parisian society. And he is hoping all of this only because he is the cousin of an aristocrat. Otherwise, he would have had no chance if he was not the cousin of an aristocrat. He would have had no chance of making it big in the society if not for Madame de Buzion, who helps him get along in the society. Therefore, Balzac is showing us how difficult it is to gain a stronghold for a young provincial man in the harsh, merciless, highly competitive jungle known as the city of Paris. The city which is an unequal jungle and where struggle for survival is absolutely brutal and cruel. So we'll stop here for the lecture and in the next part, we will discuss about the second part of the novel and the remaining parts of the novel. Thank you.